I'm sure we all enjoyed that wonderful message and song. This being Sunday night, we are happy to know that the Lord has blessed us through this week in a mighty meeting. And I just heard a while ago from little Ricky's father, they take me back over to the children's hospital for the doctors to look at him. And he said just great groups of doctors and nurses rushed up the steps into the room and stood amazed to see what's happened to little Ricky. The Lord has blessed that child and healed his body. They'd give him up there for just two or three days to live, and he's well. So we're thankful for that, and most certainly give all praise to our Heavenly Father. It's a trophy of God's grace to the human race. Just before leaving my room, I was praying in Philadelphia and and Baltimore, Maryland and different places that's calling in the morning to take a long distance call all the way from Germany and from Switzerland for people calling in from around the world as it goes at home and so forth to be prayed for. We'd like to make a short announcement now that this coming Wednesday, the Lord willing, I'm to speak in the afternoon service at the Pisgah uh, Bible Church here in the city. And uh, I believe that's the name of the place, Pisgah. Brother Smith, pastor, he's having a meeting and he, I'm going to speak for him uh, this coming uh, Wednesday afternoon. And then also the meeting begins here again Tuesday night. Tomorrow is a little rest day. God knows I need it. And so we're, after this meeting, I go up to San Jose. And then I'm going overseas on a long journey through many different nations preaching the gospel. And I certainly want to thank you people. I did not know this afternoon if they'd taken a missionary offering for me to go over. I thank you for that. That's nice. Here some time ago I went to the islands and there some 40,000 people gave their hearts to Christ in nine nights. And the governor of the island was speaking when I left and said what an impact it had upon the people and said there was one thing I never asked for any money. I never took an offering in my life. Never did in my life. But the tithings and things that people give me, I don't even ask them when I go overseas to pay my way. I take your tithes and pay my way and then I know then it's spent for the kingdom of God when I shall answer at the day of the judgment. I can say with a true heart I did the best with it I know how. And that's the same way these offerings will go here. Thank you and for tonight, for all you've done. Uh, I call the man Big Mike. He's uh, one of the ushers here. He said some sister was kind enough to bake me a cake. I haven't eaten all day. That'll be pretty good after the service is over. Thank you very kindly. I wish I could invite you all out, but I'm afraid there wouldn't be quite enough of it. <laughs> but I uh, thank you very kindly. And the little things that you do and you pass into the people and send. We appreciate that with all of our heart. Wife and I and the children here in the church tonight certainly appreciate that with all of our heart. But Brother Duplicis and his most outstanding message of how he brings the scripture in, I'm sure you're appreciating Brother Duplicy, which is to be with us the continuing the week. My boys here, I call them my boys, they're a tape artists. And they sell the books. Now, those books we buy, they're not ours. We buy those books at 40 cents off. And then haul them out and sell them to the people just so the message gets out. Mr. Lindsay prints that book. And um, the boys make tapes. These two boys, Mr. Mercer and Mr. Goad, are fine boys. They've been with me now for some time. One of them was a Catholic. The other... 
I don't believe he belonged to any church. And up in Indiana, where I had a great meeting, these boys come in and seen that discernment. So they said, that's fronty. That's just a bogus. That's a hoax. That's all it can be. So they said, we'll expose that fella. So they made himself a little FBI. Mr. Mercer was a bartender. Mr. Gold was a steam fitter, I believe, or an engineer. So they got together and formed a little FBI and grew a great big long beard and came down to my house and passed through saying, Mr. Branham, we are evangelists. We're on our road down in the south. I said, that's nice. I'm glad to meet you boys and so forth. Instead of that, they went out into the city and got them a little room and rented this room and went asking around the people if those visions were real. They were going at it in real technique. So they... After being there for a couple weeks, they came back, said, we're on a road back from down south again. We're just dropping by. Mr. Mercer with a great big beard. And uh, it happened to be they hit there just at the wrong time. The angel of the Lord was in the room. (laughs) So it said, Mr. Mercer, why would you try to call your name something else, you and Mr. Goad? And it just really laid them right on the floor. I've called them my students since then, <laughs> and they tuck right up, go into the meeting, and they wanted something that they could do along the meeting. I didn't have very much to do because I've never let my campaign get to a place to where I can't go to the littlest church, the humblest people. I've just held a revival in a church that held 20 people. Now, if I had a great big expense, I couldn't do that, but I don't want it to get like that. I've always said I never want to be great. I want to be honest. And so uh, these boys make tapes in the meetings. And they sell them just almost for what the tape is, just so the people get the message. They have these tapes, and they're at the book stand. And you'll be, we've well, got hundreds and hundreds of messages that's been preached around the world. And if you would care for the tapes or so forth, or the records, they have them on records too, you could get them at the book stand concession. The Lord bless you greatly and pray for me now for tomorrow that I get some rest. Brother David had just read a marvelous scripture here and I would like to take for a text the last few words or the last few words of the ninth verse. What hearest thou, Elijah? Now let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Eternal God, we thank Thee tonight as we address Thee as the Eternal One for all that Thou hast done for us. For it is true that our hearts stand in awe when we see the mighty working of your power, to see beyond a shadow of doubt that we tonight as Christians have the only religion of all of the religions of the world that can prove that their founder is alive. And we're so glad tonight, Lord, for this because it gives us that perfect assurance and that rest in our souls that every word that He has promised, He's still alive to make it good. And He does do it. And we are thankful for this, that you would come from glory among a humble people as we are, because it's your grace and your love to us. And we would pray tonight, Lord, that we have set this night aside now to call a prayer line, to pray for the sick and the needy. May there not be one feeble person left in our midst at the end of this service. May it be in an exceeding, abundant, above all that we could think of, Grant it, Lord. Bless this church, this Angelus temple. 
that the faithfulness and the work of a little woman, handsmaid, established this as a memorial of her love to thee. God bless its pastor, her beloved son, Brother Ra, and his lovely wife, and all the teachers and the pastors of this great work, its missionaries in the fields, and all that is connected with it, Lord, and that would take in the entire church of the living God. Bless, Lord, and may we have such an outpouring of spirit in this coming week that hundreds of precious souls will find their position at Calvary. Grant it, Lord, strengthen our voices and bless our brother Duplissy and, and also the others that are helping, the singers and all that's connected with it. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Just for a short time, I would like to call your attention now to three phases of this scripture that has just been read. One of them, I would call it Mount Carmel. The next one, the juniper tree. And the next, the cave. Elijah had just had a great day before him. And God had been preparing Elijah. And as I was standing behind the curtain tonight, listening to my most able brother, David Duplissus, Speaking of what a ministry of the supernatural meant. No one knows, unless you have to go through with it, what it means. Many times people have thought I was a, an isolationist. Because that I, I'm not out among the people. It isn't because I don't like people. I love people. But I can't be a servant of God and be a servant of the people at the same time. I must keep myself before God so that I can serve His people. And I believe that any minister of the gospel has no business just before uh, he goes to the pulpit of being out social gatherings and great dinners and so forth. He comes to the pulpit unfit, unanointed. I think that a minister ought to lay in the Shekinah glory in the presence of God before he walks out before an audience. I'm a great believer in prayer. That's what changes things is prayer. And did you ever notice after the wickedness of the night has settled down, and did you ever walk out of a morning real early after all the demons that's, and the roadhouses and has quietened down and gone to rest? All the wickedness has settled then you can walk out early of the morning in that stillness and quietness of the morning. The dew has brought the fragrance of the flowers. It's refreshing to come out into such an atmosphere. And so is it when we can come out of the room of prayer. What a privilege it is for me each night to go into that little room where Mrs. McPherson and Paul Rader and great man standing there hearing that song. Only believe, only believe all things are possible. Do you know who wrote that song? It was Paul Rader. And I was thought standing back there wondering when Paul was 
had the inspiration to write that song if he knowed that little old boy sitting at his feet would be my theme song around and around the world. We don't know what we're doing when we're speaking under inspiration. It has no end to it. It just carries on. I like Longfellow when he said, Footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another sailing over life's solemn main. For forelong and shipwrecked brother, seeing shall take heart again. Lives of great men all remind us, and we can make our lives sublime. With partings leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. I like that. What you do, somebody's watching you. And Elijah had been up in Mount Carmel for a long time. God had been feeding him by the ravens. And finally, there come a time where God was preparing that man for a great outstanding miracle. And he had called all Israel together and thought, surely, if they could see the supernatural hand of God move, they would believe that God was God. For the nation was polluted with a backslidden king Ahab and a, a wicked idolatrous Jezebel. They had brought the nation under idolatry. And it was breaking the heart of this servant of God. And do you know, as I said the other night, people, we'd better check up on our experience. For the Holy Ghost is only going to anoint in the last days those who sigh and cry for the abomination that's did in the city. Today we can shout, we can scream, we can speak with tongues have signs and things, but where is that sincerity of so sincere about the Word of God and the, the Church of God until it grieves our heart to see sin going on? And Elijah had come into all this. Then when he called all of Israel together and he made a challenge to them, let the God that is supernatural, let him that can show himself alive, let him be God. If all of your theologies, he was speaking to them. If Balaam is a God, if he can answer, let him answer. Let the God that answers let the God that keeps His Word be God. If that isn't a challenge tonight to the world again, let the God that keeps His Word be God. So what happened? He called them together, and the God of heaven answered. And a supernatural sign to Israel that He was still the God that could answer by fire. And he did just what he always did. Answered prayer. Kept his word. And after all of this, still it wasn't sufficient. And little old Elijah, he didn't know what to do, so he run to the juniper tree. I'm glad that there is a juniper tree. All God's people needs to go to that juniper tree. It's a place where he was so discouraged he didn't know what to do. So he ran out to himself and got under the juniper tree. Many of us feel like going there. And today when we see the institutions filled with people of God, nervous breakdowns, tensions... Oh, it makes us all want to run to the juniper tree. I think we can express it like the old colored lady said down south when she had been hit by an automobile. A car had struck her. 
and they asked her if she wanted to sue for damages. She said, lousy no, child. I don't need damage. I need repair. And I think that's about the way the church needs tonight is a repair. A place under the juniper tree. So we can be alone. The prophet that great day, how disappointed he was that he had done just exactly what God told him to do. And he thought, surely, if he did that, the people would believe it. But he come to find out that all the miracles that God told him to perform, he did it. And still, Jezebel not only ex refused it, but she said she would stop his campaign. He couldn't have no more of those campaigns. She'd cut his head off if he did. You see, when the devil gets a hold of a person, he just does him awful. And he thought the signs and the wonders of a living God would be sufficient. But it wasn't. So his poor heart was broke. And he ran to the juniper tree for refuge. And he laid out there and I can see him leaving his servant many miles behind and just went to himself out under the tree. All of us have a little place we go to when we get in those troubles. I got a little cave that the FBI couldn't find me that I get into. Stay in there for two or three days. Had to wait up a creek, up over a hill, through a branch, go under a tree and go down into a cave. And there's always somewhere that we can retreat and get in the presence of God again. And I believe, friends, that no man has a right to profess Christianity as a Christian until he's found such a retreat. There may come a time when men who are worldly trained not godly sent, might be able to explain all the supernatural away from the Bible. They might be able to satisfy the carnal mind that doesn't know God, that the days of miracles are past. There's no such a thing as the Holy Ghost. But if a man has ever had an experience where you met God, all the theologians in the world could never take that experience away from you. You met God face to face. And you know what you're talking about. Like Moses at that sacred sands in the backside of the desert. When a man ever meets God upon them sacred sands of that secret place of retreat, no devils in hell can ever take that away from him. For he knows he talked face to face with God. They can explain anything they want to. But you were there when it happened. And you know what you speak of. And Elijah knew that his God was real. And so he had brought it to a showdown. But then when the people had turned down the supernatural sign. Oh, there was nothing to it. The lightning might have struck. Jezebel made her threats and all of her gain. They didn't want to give up their social societies. And the old Elijah's heart was broke. Any minister knows what Monday morning is after a hard day on Sunday. Compare that. You preacher's wives, you know how your husband is on Monday morning. After he's preached hard two or three times Sunday, he's so worn out. What do you think about poor little old Elijah? There he was, no one to comfort him. And he stopped under this juniper tree. And he knelt down and looked up to God and said, Lord, I'm so tired and so weary. Why don't you just take my life and let me go? My father's all went so let me go. Man who dealing the supernatural, who stay in the presence of God. And when you see 
God's program turned down. You preach it and you try your best and do everything that God tells you to do and still they walk away from it. It's heartbreaking. God Almighty has done enough here in the Angeles Temple this last week till I had Los Angeles set a fire. No wonder he said it'll be more terrible for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of the judgment. And a poor little fellow, skinny, laying there and his gray hair hanging over his shoulders. God said, my servant needs some rest. God's mercy to his servant. He just laid him down on the bunch of weeds and he went to sleep. I'd imagine there was 10,000 angels watching him sleep. There's one assurance the believer has. Though the world turned him down, yet God loves him. The world may call you holy roller. He may call you fanatic. But if you're true to God, there's one sure thing. God loves you. And his angels are encamped about those who fear him. I'd imagine on every limb all around through the place were swarms of angels. And God came down and he said, My poor little tired servant. He's so nervous and tore up he don't know what to do. I want to pick out the angel standing here. It's got the softest hands. Don't you scare him. Walk over and stroke his brow right easy. And I want the best cook among you. And go up there and get all the vitamins that you can find and put in this cornmeal. The world's turned him down, but I'm going to treat him right. Hallelujah. That means praise our God. Don't get scared of that. Bring forth the best that we got. Cook him a corn cake and set him down some water. And this soft-handed angel went over and stroked the little servant of God on the brow. Remember, if you've done your best, God's still got those angels in order. He loves you just the same as he loved Elijah. And he stroked his brow. And Elijah woke up. And I may hear him say something like this. The Lord your God who loves you. You've done your best, Elijah. I only sent those signs for a witness. That in the day of the judgment, they'll have to stand it alone. Ah, you've done just as I told you to do. I know you're tired and weary now. And the Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, has sent me to feed you this bread and this water. Elijah, rubbing his eyes, raising up little frail, shaking hands, took a hold of the bread and eat it. Just then the great angelic choir come out, formed a little panoramic around him like that and begin to sing the songs. Like no mother could coo her baby to sleep. Let him sleep again. Then father turned around and said, You know, I love him so much. The journey's great. He's got a lot to go through with yet. I'm not through with him. So I must feed him again. So he called the angels and dumped in another big bundle of vitamins. And cooked up another corn cake and set him a cruise of water and stroked his brow and fed him again. I'm so glad that there is a juniper tree. When we get all wore and tore up, we can go under that juniper tree and find spiritual vitamins to travel any kind of a trip. There he laid, woke up feeling a little better. And he went 40 days and 40 nights 
I'd imagine if there's a doctor listening in, wouldn't you like to know what kind of a vitamin he used? That'll keep a man on a corn cake and a glass of water for 40 days and 40 nights. That's the power of our God. Then he finds a cave way back in the wilderness. And the first thing you know, God found him back in there. And he called to him. And there went a rushing wind through that tore up the mountain. The rocks rent and fell down. Elijah just sat and listened. And there came a shaking, an earthquake that shook the mountain. But Elijah just sat still. And then come the fire fell. Lightning flashed. And Elijah sat still. But then a still small voice spoke. And Elijah answered. He wrapped his mantle over his face and walked out. I just wonder that if we haven't listened too much to Russian mighty winds and fire and blood and everything else and if failed to hear that still small voice wonder if we've looked so much to gifts that we can't see the giver you know America is prone for noise that's the reason rock and roll is so popular and all these other lots of noises now we've had Russian mighty winds we've had great shakings but where has God been in all of it? Elijah said he was not in it. What did we do with Russian winds? What have we done with all kinds of sensations? Where has it got us denominated so tight that we won't give fellowship one to the other? What have we done by it? Has the church better off? Is it unified by Russian winds? No, sir. It's only unified when them people will hear that still, small voice of God. That's where we're failing, friends. When God appears on the sign with something and proves himself to be God, instead of going after the noise, let's go after the one that made the noise. We forget the giver. Paul said, though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not love, it profits me nothing. Though I can have faith to move mountains and have not love, it profits me nothing. See, we're so prone to go after the gift instead of the giver. When you see signs and wonders take place, don't notice the signs so much, but look what's behind it. It's that still, small voice that speaks. That's the reason we can't have revivals in America. It's because people go after gifts instead of the giver. That's what's the matter with the world tonight. All we got, if you want great crowds and audiences, you have to have a real classical Hollywood outfit with a lot of show. American people want entertainment. They don't want the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, the radio and the television will give them more entertainment than the church can do it, and they stay home. All that comes out is the elect of God that's still hungering and thirsting and calling and crying for the real thing of God. It all looks bad when we think of the Lord God of heaven, what He's doing, giving great miracles and signs. And then the people don't listen to it. They'll go and say, oh, I saw it once. Oh, I've been in Brother Branham's meeting. I saw discernment. I was in Oral Roberts' meeting. I saw him tell how many was in the audience should come and didn't do it and so forth. And how he told them what would happen. I've seen all of that. I've been to Pentecostals and heard the Russian wind and the, the speaking. And I heard all of that. That's right. But what was behind it? There's where you fail to not listen to the still small voice of God to call you. 
There's where the trouble lays. Is in that. Certainly, the world can mimic and, and out entertain. The church is not an entertainment. It's not supposed to entertain. It's supposed to preach a new birth that makes a new creature in Christ. But the world is looking for entertainment, some social parties or some fantastic of some sort. Now, I want you to notice what's taking place. It isn't always the noisy things that's great things. It's not the noisy things. A wagon can go out in the field. When it's unloaded, it'll bump and rattle and make a lot of noise. Can come right back over them same bumps loaded with good things and won't even make a squeak. Why, it's loaded. What the church needs tonight is to be loaded, filled with the love of God. The sun can draw a million gallons of water with less noise than we can pump a glass full out of a pump. That's right. The, the heavens can sprinkle dew all over the earth with less noise than you can sprinkle your front lawn. Certainly. Did you ever hear the planets turning? Great things are quiet things. Watch the Holy Spirit when it comes in tonight. How quiet it gets everything. But we are after sensations, running after little things, failing to hear that voice. Did you ever hear the daybreak? No, you never heard the daybreak. Yet it scatters all the darkness. If we would only listen to the voice of Him that speaks behind these things, there would be fellowship amongst all churches. Methodist, Baptist, Protestants, Catholic, and all together would tear down the middle walls of petition and we'd have brotherly love. And this Angeles Temple tonight would be packed out to the roof, standing out on the yard somewhere. If we could only hear that voice of God speaking behind the thing. Remember, those things went first. The voice spoke last. It was the last thing. We've had rushing winds and thunder and everything else. But the hour is coming now that the voice of God speaks. And he proves that it's him. It was him that sent the thunder. And the one at the thunder instead of listening for the voice. He sent the wind. But the one after the wind instead of the voice. You know what? It isn't the little rippling pool that makes a lot of noise that reflects the stars of heaven. It's the little pool that's deep, sound, quiet that reflects the stars. All these things are God's way of doing it. I wonder if we tonight haven't went so much after the, the noise that we have put so much interest in that until we forgot the little boys. Say, what are you trying to say, Brother Branham? I've got letter after letter this week that the people wrote to me and said, I come over to the Angeles Temple, thought I'd hear a servant of God. Why, you're still a Baptist? Why, you're as dead as they are. You ain't got no spirit. You're just as formal as the rest of the Baptists. Listen, brother. You might have a lot of noise, but I wonder how much spirit's behind it, is what I'm wondering. It isn't noise that makes spirit. I've seen people that could jump and run and shout and, and play bands and run up and down the platform and didn't have enough real true faith to stop a toothache. That's right. It's that still small voice of God that operates the power of God. That makes things real, brings life to the church. That's what I'm speaking of. It ain't noise that counts. It's a vindication, the Spirit of God that makes the difference. He's been here each night performing signs and wonders and miracles among the people. It's true. I don't see how 
Pentecostal people who claim to have kissed the cup of the golden blessings of Jesus Christ can sit still hardly when the Holy Ghost is moving in such things. But it's because it ain't got a noise behind it. The noise went first. Then the still small voice come. We've had those times. It was all God's way. God was attracting the attention of Elijah. And Elijah represents the church. He was making him listen. But now when the time comes for the voice to speak, that's something in our heart. We look and wonder then, what is it all about? Some time ago, I seen a picture in Germany called the cloud picture. It looks horrible when you look at it. It looks like a big mess of clouds all wadded together, and, and it looks like a horrible thing. But as you get closer to it, closer you get, you find out that it's not clouds. It's angels' wings beating together, rejoicing the praises of God. And you've seen the Pentecostal experiences, and you've looked at it from afar off. And say, oh, listen to that and all this and the thunders and rushing winds. But if you'll just get close to it, get into it, you'll find out closer you get, the more real it becomes. And that still, small voice of God brings out the angelic part of God and speaks to His people. It's not as rough as it looks like it is. It's the glory of God, but you're standing off looking at it. Like Jezebel, she wasn't up on Mount Carmel to see it happen. They come and told her, oh, the prophet done great signs. I'll chop his head off. You can't stand off and look at anything. John Sproul, a friend of mine, taking his wife and took a trip over to La Salle Lorraine's France. And the guide was taking him through a certain garden. And he showed them a statue of the Lord Jesus. And Brother Spohr said he was looking at that statue. He said, what did the sculpture have in his mind? Why well, I don't see any sufferings of Christ. I don't see nothing. This looks like the statue. What does that mean? And the guide said to him, said, Mr. Sproul, you're perhaps criticizing that statue. Said, I am said, I don't know what the sculpture had in mind. He said, the thing of it is, you have to know what the sculpture had in mind before you can see what he was trying to do. He said, now come down here. And he went down to the foot of the cross. And there was a pad. And he said, kneel down. He said, now look up. And Mr. Sproul said he thought his heart would break. There was every agony that Jesus went through on the cross all featured. He said, you see, sir, the statue was made to get down and look up to, not stand off and look over at. Well, that's the way Pentecost is. It's, and that's the way the Word of God is. That's the way the promises of God is. It isn't a stand off at one side and say, oh, there's nothing to it. Get down on your knees one time and look up to it, and you'll see altogether a different picture. You'll hear something speak to you through that word that you just picked up and say, Oh, it's just the words wrote on paper. You get down on your knees one time and say, Lord God, is this your word? Is this your promise to me, O oh Lord? And you'll feel the tears running down the side of your cheek. It'll look altogether different than what it did. If you'll do that, the Methodists will look different to you Baptists. And you Pentecostal will look different to the rest of them. You'll all see God if you just get down and respect it and listen for God's voice and take the Scripture and take the things of God in the light that they are meant for. God's Word's not to be criticized. It's to be believed. Someone said to me not long ago, said, Brother Branham, Jesus said, greater than this shall you do. Said, sure, greater is preaching the gospel. Jesus said, these things that I do shall you also these works that I do shall you also. The same works, only more of it. It would be in the universal church around the world. For now it could only be in one place that was in Christ. But when Christ is in His church, the same works that He did will be going on completely around the world all the time. 
What we fail to see is to listen to that still small voice that speaks to us. Then wrap ourselves in His righteousness and walk out saying, Lord God, did you speak to me? Does it mean me, O Lord? I'm here tonight. I'm sick. I'm needy. Oh, if I could only stood on Mount Carmel and seen Elijah, after all that fasting and prayer, bring down that fire from heaven. Bring down a sign out of the heaven and prove that you were still God. The God that's with the Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. The God that was in the burning bush with Moses. That same God was here on Mount Carmel. If I could see you do that, or do as you did when you was manifested in flesh here on earth. I'd worship you with all my heart. Then you'll hear God speak to you when you do that. Let us bow our heads. Thank the Lord. Now, radio audience, you might not have heard that. It was a, a speaking with tongues and an interpretation of tongues. That's a gift that belongs in the church. God placed it in the church himself. It's after the message. It came just in order. Not while the message is going on. The spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophet. Now it came just in order and it called the church to repent and to come forward with God. May the Lord God bless. Lord Jesus, we thank you for these things, these manifestations. And may the people see tonight that thou art God that heals the sick. You're the God that knows the secret of the heart. You're the God of Pentecost. You're the God of Elijah. You're the God of Moses. You're the God that will come someday and reveal himself unto us and take us up into glory. We thank you for your presence and for your words of comfort to us and for the warning for us to repent. I pray, Lord God, that you'll grant all these things will be accomplished in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, Father, as the prayer line is to be formed in a few moments, I do not know what will be in that prayer line, but thou does know. And I pray that you'll do things tonight that the people will sit and watch and listen for that little still small voice of God. And when they see your spirit begin to move among the people, may they be happy and rejoice and accept Jesus as their Savior and healer. For we asked it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this last five, four or five nights, we haven't given out any prayer cards. Just let the Holy Spirit move across the audience, calling the people and doing the things that He uh, desires to do. And last evening once, there was something strange happened last evening. It hasn't happened before in the temple. That was... It's just a gift that you just humble yourself or relax before God and He uses your speech. God has no voice but yours and mine. He, our hands is His hands. If we can just be so sub, uh, submitted to the Spirit that it can use our voice and use our hands and use our eyes. Now, you don't have to do these things 
God just sets those in church whoever. It's signs that the people might know that God still lives. It's Jesus, the Son of God, working through His body that He has redeemed. We're not worthy. Certainly not. But He's worthy. And it's not us to say this one's worthy and that one's not worthy. It's God to do the choosing of those things. Now, last evening, I couldn't get the people to understand way back in the audiences and where he would be calling them. And then I would just ask the Lord and he would call their name. And it come to one little woman that was suffering with something. I do not remember. And when the Holy Spirit spoke and called her what her trouble was, then she never responded to it. And just in a few moments, I heard my own voice speaking in another language. And come to find out, the little woman was Finnish. She was a Finn. And the Holy Spirit had called her name and told her all about it and told her to praise God. I don't know nothing about Finnish. It was the Holy Spirit calling that woman out, seeing that she wouldn't be left out. That He speaks in every language. At the day of Pentecost, every language under heaven was gathered together there. And God spoke in every dialect there was under the heavens. And if we can just submit ourselves. Now that's, who could criticize that not being Pentecost? When the Holy Spirit, you're, I don't even know English. I'm a Kentuckian. I, I don't even know good English. But when the Holy Spirit got a hold, it spoke Finish and call the woman in her trouble and told her to praise the Lord. And finish. There happened to be people here who could understand it and translate it and come to me this morning telling me about the little woman raised up, shaking her hands and praising God. That's sovereign grace. That ought to make every sick person in here take a hold of Christ. That ought to make every cripple rise to his feet and believe the Lord Jesus. Listen for that voice. Now, tonight, the American people has been taught laying on of hands. That's a Jewish custom. Never was to the Gentiles. But we've been taught that. What you've been taught, that's what you believe. Jeriah said, My daughter lies sick almost to death. Come lay your hands on her. That's the tradition of the elders. She'll live. But the Roman, the Gentile, said, I'm not worthy that you'd come under my roof. Just speak the word. And my servant will live. And he turned around and admired that Roman. Said, I haven't seen faith like that in Israel. I don't know why it is that my ministry doesn't take a halt in America like it does overseas. I just, it must be the indoctrination of the churches and so forth. It just simply seems like I haven't got campaign managers and I haven't got a great big bunch of cooperation and if somebody go around make so many hundred churches cooperate and bring great uh, singers and so forth I don't desire that that ain't my I believe the ministry is to the elect to those who want to listen we was overseas the other day over in Kingston Jamaica they did not know we were coming until Thursday afternoon, Friday afternoon, we were there. The first night, there's about 5,000. Second night, about 15,000. Third night, about 30-something thousand. And 15,000 come to Christ at one time. And I call some people to the platform. And the Lord began to reveal to them. As soon as that taken place, out through that great wide audience, there were thousands times thousands seated. They got up off a little old cots and stretchers and wheel carts that they had been pushed in. And you could pick up bus loads of them or truck loads laying on the ground for one ten minutes of prayer. They believed it. Went right on down into Puerto Rico and the same thing repeated again. In Strike America, it's different. Why? I wonder. And in South Africa, Durban, South Africa... Duplicis here in his country at Durban where we had many thousands of people gathered out when 
five people come to the altar up on the platform to be prayed for and the Holy Spirit revealed things like that, I made one prayer and they estimated that 25,000 outstanding healings taken place. 25,000. They've taken seven car, bus loads or, or truck loads of old crutches and sticks off of the fairgrounds where that they had laid. And 30,000 surrendered their heart to Jesus at one time. Why can't we Americans believe like that? You know what? I say this with reverence. Not to you people. Not at all. My voice is going out in radio land. But America is burnt over. It's been combed and gleaned and glided and fished and pulled and so forth till it's just about ready for judgment now. That's right. The next thing is judgment. And we're going to get it. Just remember that. Tonight we're calling the prayer cards to pray for them. There isn't a line of discernment. It's only a line to pray for the sick. And I believe what prayer cards did they give out? What prayer cards did they give out today? C's? All right. Prayer card C's is the one we'll be calling then. All right. There's about a hundred, I suppose. Usually they give out a hundred. And who has C number one? Raise up your hand. A woman sitting back here in the middle aisle. Come, if you can, come right up here. Number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let them come first and line right up here now. And they'll be plumb out into the hall. And they all get lined out. And to the radio audience, I wish you could be here tonight in this lovely Angelus Temple to see this great Mammoth gathering here. All the main floors seated in the first balcony, seated practically out. People are sitting, longing, waiting for something to happen. Before me sits people in wheelchairs and in cots and so forth, waiting for the moving of the Spirit. I wish you could only be here to see this. They're waiting with great anticipations. And just as sure as God of heaven lives and reigns tonight, if they'll only listen to the voice of God, there will not be a feeble person in our midst in a few minutes. If they'll just believe it. All right, we're calling the prayer line now. One to ten. Ten to twenty. It's prayer card C, like in California. Uh, ten... 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Take your place. All right, while they're coming, 20 to 50. Take your place. 20, 30, 40, 50. Just take your position now in the line. Some of you, it would be better off if you go out the door at the front of the aisle, come right around and come down along the side. I believe you could line up a lot better. You who are unable to move, you just show the usher your card. And when your number is called, you'll be brought right here to the platform for prayer. Are you expecting something to happen? Are you waiting to see the moving of the troubling of the water? What did the water do when it was troubled? It was a sign that the angel of the Lord was on the water. Is that right? It was a supernatural sign to show the the current of the water change. A troubled water is when current's going one way and the winds are blowing it back the other way. That's troubled water. And when we see troubled water, we know it has to be something to make that water run different from its current. Under that porch were these great spouts run out and the waters flowed around by the sheep pool coming down. Now the people laid there in great multitudes and they didn't wait just for one night, two nights, three nights. They would wait for months and years. Some of them had laid there year in and out waiting for the troubling of the water. And the first time that somebody stepped in with faith enough to be healed, it drawed the virtue of the angel off the water. And they had to wait for another season. What a season was lauded, I do not know. Perhaps weeks. But they waited patiently for it to come into the water. 
And as historians tell us, they would stab one another trying to get into the water, see who could get there first, to test their faith with the angel of the Lord. God in all ages, at all times, has always had a way of divine healing. Always. All the way back in the Old Testament. All the way through the New Testament. Down to the New Age. Right to this present time. God's had a fountain open for those who believe for divine healing. All right, 50 to 60 now stand, if you will. See, 50 to 60. Take your place over here. I believe maybe there's a little room here. You can come through this way now and just keep going back. Or if you want to go out and go around, the ushers there will, will line you up. Now, while it's 60 to 70, up to 75, let them line up and start around the, the road. Now, if you cannot move, well, then you just show somebody your prayer card and the ushers will bring you to the platform when your number is called. They'll see when they get them lined up. That's the way we line them up so we know we got everybody in the line that's called. How many doesn't have a prayer card and you want God to heal you? Anywhere, just raise up your hand. Have you noticed in the days gone by this last week how the Holy Spirit goes up into the balconies all around on both sides and all through the building and not one time does it fail? If that's right to the audience out here, say amen. Perfectly. Every time. For it's your faith that does that. Your faith makes you well. You know the woman that touched his garment? He said, thy faith has saved thee. Did you notice that? S-A-V-E-D, has saved thee. The Greek word there, I believe, is sozo. Is that right? The, the faith has saved thee. Just saved physically, the same as being saved spiritually. Every time it's translated, the word save in the Bible is sozo, which means saved. Saved physically, saved spiritually. Same word all the time. Thy faith has saved thee. Save from the sickness, save from death, save from the grave, save from a premature grave, yes. And save from a devil's hell, save to a God's kingdom, sure. All right, 75 to 100, now take your places. See, 75 to 100. Now go out this way and turn into the side of the aisle because this is all filled up in here now all the way to the door. And just reverently take your place and the ushers will place you and we'll start in the prayer line just in the next few moments. Just as soon as we cause no commotion, we don't want anything of the Holy Spirit lost. Now listen, when you're watching for the Holy Spirit, now there's nobody believes in shouting and rejoicing in the Spirit any more than I do because I believe that anything's got life has emotion. If your religion hasn't got some life in it, you better bear it. It's dead. It brings emotion. But while we're coming to God, let's come reverently, quietly, listening to see what He'll say. And then when He does something for us, that's the time to let the glory uh, of God reign from our hearts. Be reverent, watch and if out in the meeting at any time you feel that God has spoke to your heart while these lines are going through, then you raise your hands and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing me. Let, and tell somebody sitting by you, By the blood of the Lamb and their testimony, they overcame. Is that right? You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by your testimony. If we can just have faith and believe in the Lord God, that He'll do these things for us. Now, it's early. There's no need of rushing. Just be reverent and quiet. Just about 15 minutes, the line will be finished. And I believe if you people will take this much time, and you in Radio Land, you be sure to do this. When you're hearing the people rejoicing over their healing, the prayer being made for the sick. 
then you rejoice too and accept Jesus as your healer. Remember, God is omnipresent, present, omnipotent, mission, omnipotent, infant. The infinite God, omnipresent, present everywhere, omnipotent mission knows all things, all power for all omnipotent. That's our God. And he's there in the hospital with you, just the same as he'd be here at the church. You can't hide a saint from his prayer. They throwed one one time in the belly of a whale. And he went down to the bottom of the sea with weeds wrapped around his neck. But you can't hide a saint from his prayer. He turned over and looked around, seen the whale's belly everywhere. But he said, they're all lying vanities. Once more will I look to your holy temple, Lord. And when he began to look at, towards the temple, Solomon, when dedicating the temple, said, If thy people be in trouble anywhere and will look towards this holy place and pray, then hear from heaven, Lord, and deliver them. And Jonah believed that prayer. And God kept Jonah alive for three days and nights in the belly of that whale, according to the Scriptures. And if God could do that for Jonah in the belly of the whale, looking towards a, a natural temple like this one here, built by human hands, how much more can he hear your prayer tonight when you look towards a heavenly temple where Jesus sets at the right hand of God with his own blood to make intercessions on your confession? Sure. He went down in a lion's den to deliver one of his servants. He went into a fiery furnace to deliver one. Surely he'll come to the hospital where you're listening. Surely he'll come to that little humble home where you're laying there waiting. He'll come up in the balcony. He'll come down on the floor. He'll come anywhere you are and deliver you from sin or sickness if you'll only have faith and believe him. Will you do that now? Just a few minutes longer and they're out into the hall now. Uh, lining the people down the hall for there's a great number waiting to be prayed for. I love that song. Let's hum it once. A great physician now is near the sin of Sing Jesus, He speaks the true, being hard to cheer. Oh, hear the voice, that still small voice of Jesus. Sweetest note in seraph song, sweet. His name, O mortal tongue, sweetest carol ever sung, O Jesus, blessed Jesus. Everyone be seated now. The line has been formed. The ushers have their places. I'd ask you now, be just as reverent as you can. Now to you that's standing in the line, you're noticing that there's a difference in my ministry because I'm just praying, laying hands on the sick. Because that's your request for me to do so. If I should stop in discernment for everyone on this line, I'd be here for several nights. And I would not be able to stand here but just... One or two or three, and I'd be so weak they'd take me from the platform as they usually do. Now remember, if you've got unconfessed sin in your heart, I'm placing it back in your lap. Worse than this will come up on you. And if you've got unconfessed sin, step out of that prayer line and make it right with God. Then come back and get in the prayer line. Remember, I'm not responsible by a divine gift to take a curse that God permitted Satan to put on it to bring you to him. I'm just going to pray. And now, if you feel right in your heart with God, and you feel that everything's all right, and you have a right, 
you're believing that God's going to heal you, then walk up here reverently. And when you pass this platform, just as you're baptized or any other art of the church, go off the platform rejoicing. My hands won't have anything to do with it laying on you unless you accept your healing from Jesus Christ. That was his order to lay hands on the sick. These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Now, Lord, there's great anticipation and people are waiting. Now the rest of the service is yours, O Lord. I pray that there won't be a feeble person in our midst. May the Holy Spirit speak down into the hearts of the people tonight. May they not look for some great thunder or some great rushing wind, but may they listen. That's why I spoke that tonight, Father, that they might down in the depths of their heart catch the vision of what God is doing. Grant it, Lord, for I asked it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let the prayer line be started now. You just come one at a time and we'll pray. How do you do? Now, just stand right over here just a moment, ladies. It is that you are the first one in the line. Now that the audience, how many in this visible audience have never seen the ministry before, never seen my ministry? Raise up your hands, would you? My, there's many, many, hundreds of them that uh, hasn't seen it. Now, if the Lord Jesus was standing here by this woman, I do not know her. God knows her. Are we strangers to one another, lady? If that's right, raise up your hand so that the people see. We've never met before. Well, now, if you want to know that the Bible still lives, here's a case like St. John 4. A man and a woman meet for their first time. Like Jesus met the woman at the well. He talked to her a few minutes until he found what her trouble was. How many knows what her trouble was? Raise your hand. Sure. She was living with her sixth husband. And Jesus told her, go get your husband and come here. She said, I have no husband. He said, that's right. You've had five and the one you're living with now is not your husband. She said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now we know when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. But who are you? He said, I'm he that speaks to you. She ran into the city and said, come see a man who told me the things I've done. Isn't this the Messiah? Now, if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that was a Messiah sign to that generation, it's got to be the same Messiah sign to this generation, or he's a different Messiah. If that's true, say amen. amen. Now, to let you know that it's not a man, God knows that I do not know this woman. I've never seen her in my life. But if the Holy Spirit will come here and prove that he's still Messiah by using my eyes, my lips, my mouth, and her faith and my faith. There's something she's here for. She might be a deceiver. She might be a Christian. She might be here for financial troubles. I don't know. I, I've never, I've, I have no way of knowing. She's just a woman that comes here in a prayer line. But if the Lord God will speak let her be the judge, whether it's right or not. Then how many of you will actually know that the presence of Jesus Christ is here? Raise your hand and say, I would accept it. Now, both of us, here's the Bible. We've never met before in our lives. Now, I don't say that he will do it. If he does, we'll be thankful. Now, sister, just to speak to you a moment. You don't have to look at me. Just uh, you're, The woman is a Christian. Yeah. Because from her comes a feeling of friendship. Her spirit that's in her is welcoming the spirit that's in me. Now, in other words, there is a daughter of God. I am his son, adopted son by Jesus Christ. She's standing there needing something. I'm standing here to pray for her. Now, if I would lay my hands on her and say, go get well, Jesus Christ, go make you well, that would be all right. But now what if the Holy Spirit comes here and reveals something that's in her life back under that she knows I know nothing about? If he knows what has been, he surely will know what will be, and she'll be the judge to know whether it's right or not. And then 
It's up to you to believe from where it comes from. When that was done in the Bible times, the Orthodox Church said he is a fortune teller. He's Beelzebub. They said that in their hearts. Jesus said, I'll forgive you for saying that against me, but someday the Holy Ghost has come to do the same thing. That's this day. One word against it will never be forgiven in this world or the world to come. Because they call the Spirit of God a fortune teller or an evil spirit. The lady standing here is very nervous. And she's really needing an operation. Because she's got hemorrhoids. And those hemorrhoids are breaking and bleeding. That's right, isn't it? If that's right, raise up your hand. That's right. Now, what knowed that? Now, whatever I told her, I don't know now. See, that, wasn't, that was not my voice. It was my lips moving, but something else telling her something that wasn't me. Now, you say you might have guessed that, Brother Branham. All right. Let's talk to her just a moment longer so the, the anointing of the Spirit will get into the building. Now, let me just talk with her again. Yes, here it comes again. The woman's conscience is something's going on. Did you ever see the picture that the scientific world has taken that angel of the Lord? That's just what's on you now. If you audience, the radio or whatever, could see right here between me and that woman is that light milling around. The woman is facing an operation. It's bleeding hemorrhoids. And it keeps seeing some elderly person keeps appearing here it's a man it's her daddy and he's got a dark shadow of death over him he's dying with a cancer and he's in a hospital in a great city where a river runs by the city it's St. Louis, Missouri thus saith the Lord oh that's true that's true is that true? Yes, yeah, true. Now, do you believe the Lord? Do you believe God could reveal to me who this woman is? Would that help your faith? Now, sister, I don't know that he will. I'm just asking his grace. Yes, Lord. Your first name is Alice. That's right. Spade is your last name. That's right. Exactly right. Return home believing and you can receive what you have asked for in the name of the Lord. Now, let us just raise our hands and give praise to God. God bless you, my sister. Go believe me now. Now, if I don't say nothing to you, you believe anyhow, will you? All right. But your heart trouble then will leave you if you'll go and believe. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may our sister be healed. Now, sister, you're aware that the Holy Spirit here, if I didn't tell you a thing, if I told you what was wrong with you, would you, uh, would you believe? It would make you believe more? But I see I can't do it all the way down the line. But if you believe, the diabetes will leave you. Will you believe it? All right, then go and say thank the Lord and be happy and believe with all your heart. All right, sister. If I don't say nothing, just pray for you. Believe with all your heart. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll bless this woman and make her well. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Come, sister. If I don't say a word, what's wrong? You believe in God's presence, that one who we're anointed with now. If I lay hands on you, you believe you're back. Tr- Come, it's already said, it seems. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal our sister and make her well. Amen. These signs shall follow them that believe. Come, sister, believing. What do you think about that tumor? You think it'll leave you? Go on your road and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, and be well. Yours also. Would you believe it with yours to be gone? In the name of the Lord Jesus, I lay hands on my sister for her healing. Amen. Believe now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for my sister's healing. Amen. All right. Are you believing out there? See, you don't have to tell the people. Now, be reverent. Just watch along. Keep your eyes. Listen, radio audience. The people are being healed. I see them when I... It isn't that we have to tell the people. But you can. It's all right. But it weakens. And it makes everyone want to do that. Here. Here's a woman. Stand here. Art, is this the next person? Art, do you believe, sister? You and I are strangers to each other. Is that right? 
I don't know you. You don't know me. If that's right, raise up your hand so the visible audience can see. If the Lord Jesus will tell me what you're here for or something, will you believe me to be his servant and know that there has to be some supernatural power here to know that or I wouldn't know it. Would you think it was an evil spirit or the spirit of Christ according to the promise of the Bible? The spirit of Jesus. Thank you. Then you shall have what you've asked for. What you're here for? You're real nervous. You've got complications. You're all broke down. You have diabetes. And let me tell you, you've got something on your heart. That's a boy. Your son. Do you believe that God can tell me what's wrong with him? He has ulcers and he has asthma. But above all of that, he's a sinner and not saved. And you're praying for his soul. That's thus saith the Lord. Who's present with you. God bless you. Go and receive it. Do you believe, sister? I do. Oh, Lord, I pray that you'll heal our sister. And take her from this crutch tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come, sister. Do you believe, sister? Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands up on you because it's written, These signs shall follow them that believe. I believe. Do you believe the little one will be healed if I lay hands up on it? Yes. Bring it here then. Lord, they said, Suffer little children to come unto me. And I lay my hands up on this little baby for its healing and its mother. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the disease depart. Amen. The Bible said, These signs shall follow them that believe. You believe it, I believe him who I'm talking about. Then these signs shall follow. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Amen. Come. Do you women believe as you're coming together that God will heal and make you well? I lay my hands up on you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and according to his word and promise, you shall recover. Amen. Do you believe, sir, as you're bringing this man, that the man will be healed? You believe it yourself for you? All right, come near and let's pray. Lord, I lay my hands upon this feeble body, and I pray that they shall recover according to your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, sir. That's right. Go believe in now, brother. That's the way. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ who made the promise, give this woman her healing as I lay hands on her in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord God who made the promise, give the healing to this woman as he promised they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. God bless you, sister. The Lord God who made the promise, may he confirm his promise as I lay hands upon my brother in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the healing power that was given to the church at the day of Pentecost come upon our brother as I lay hands on him in confirmation that I believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Are you believing? Let the radio land now while we pray for the radio land. Oh God, way out there in radio land. May the Holy Ghost come upon those people out there and may the sick be healed everywhere. May they hear now, faith cometh by hearing, and may the gospel witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ come through the ether waves of this radio and heal all that's listening in that's sick. If they're in the bar room, pool room, wherever they may be, may they be healed just now from sin and sickness. In Jesus Christ's name. Now we shall continue the prayer line. Here's another woman standing here. We're strangers to one another, are we, sister? Do you believe me to be his servant? Do you believe God could tell me what your trouble is? But then it, would it help you to believe? Would it help the audience now? Would you make you may believe God more for your healing? Would it? All right. Look this way, sister. You believe now with all your heart? There's so many praying, see, at this time. Your trouble is extreme nervousness. You're all tore up. And then you got swelling in your arms. That swelling comes from an operation, cancer operation from the shoulder. That's thus saith the Lord. That's true. Now, if you'll go and believe, it'll leave you. Amen. Come, sister. Oh, Lord God, grant the healing of this young woman as she passes through this prayer line. Amen. Lord God. As this mother comes down along the line, I pray that you will heal her and make her well. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Now, not only am I praying, but just look at here, there's hundreds times hundreds here visible praying and thousands out there in radio land. It's got to happen, hasn't it? And, and the presence of the Lord Jesus here, our risen Lord, our Savior, our beloved King, Lord Jesus, pray that you heal this woman and make her well as I lay hands on her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, sister dear. I lay my hands upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be healed. Amen. Come now, my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you for your healing. Amen. All those people out there are praying now. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the presence of the Holy Ghost, may this man's heart not be carnal, but may he come as to the, the living God. And the saints are praying all around over Los Angeles, everywhere. May he be healed in Jesus' name. Come, my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for your healing. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for our sister's healing. Amen. God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for his request. Amen. God bless you. Come, sister. You're suffering with arthritis. You believe Jesus Christ will heal you? Oh, Lord, creator of heavens and earth, grant the healing of this woman. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you going to believe, sister, for you and your baby? In the name of Jesus Christ, may mother and child be healed. Amen. Amen. You're believing, brother? In the name of Jesus Christ, may our brother be delivered. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon the woman for her deliverance. Amen. Come, sister. Now, don't let this coming through be in vain. No, no, it's going to happen. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal her and make her well. Bless this one who is with her, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, brother, not in vain, but let the power of Jesus Christ come into your life now. Hear that still, small voice as you pass from this place in Jesus' name. Come, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, may your healing be. Amen. Come, sister. Do you believe God tell me what's wrong with you? Will you? Will it help you a little? I believe you're the first colored lady that's passed by. You believe that this female trouble that's bothering you will be gone when I pray for you? In the name of Jesus Christ, let it leave her, Lord. Amen. Go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, may his request be granted, Lord. Amen. Come, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her request be granted. Amen. Now, it's your attitude. Now, be real reverent. Everybody praying. It's you people in the line. Now, it's your attitude as you pass here. See that little woman? She just started out of this line thinking. Listen, she had a drainage to her trouble, whatever it was. I've seen that drainage that's been happening. If I'm not mistaken, it's a female trouble that she knows only God knows because it was in the bathroom where it happened. It's stopped now. She can go and be well. In the name of Jesus. See the attitude? What is it? It's because of her attitude. Why am I thinking? Lord, in Jesus' name, help her. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, grant her healing. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the woman be healed. Amen. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the woman be healed. Lord God, I lay hands upon our sister in the name of Jesus Christ for her healing. Come, sister. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I lay my hands in obedience to his command on my sister. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon this, my sister, for her healing. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon her sister for her healing. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay hands upon sister for her healing. I see as soon as the, the vision stopped, the people seem to lose faith. Don't do that. That's wrong. Here, it's, it's going all the time. I see what's the matter with the people. 
Here, look at this woman. You believe God will heal that tumor? Then go and believe it. See? See? Just believe. Have faith. All right. Come, sister. Do you believe God will heal that stomach trouble? Then go and believe. Just have faith now. Believe. Lord God, I bring this woman to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. And this, our sister, Lord, is praying to her. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for this young woman, Lord, that you'll heal her in Jesus' name. Grant it, Lord. Oh, Lord God, grant the healing of our sister in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Grant it, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Oh, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may our sister be healed. Come, sister. You believe? Yes, sir. You're seriously, it's a heart trouble, but God yes, will heal it. Trouble. It's gone now, so Praise just go the believe Lord. Praise Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal her in the name of Jesus Christ. May it be so. Come. O oh Lord, creator of heavens and earth, as this woman reaches her hand, may it not be to mine, but to yours, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lord God, heal our sister and give her her request. In Jesus' name. Grant it, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll heal her and make her well. In the name of Jesus. You see how it does just as soon as the vision seem to let loose? That makes me so weak, friends. How many understands that? While a woman touched the garment of our Lord and he said virtue went out. I got weak. How many knows that's the truth? Well, if he, the Son of God, got weak from one vision, what would it do to me? A sinner saved by grace. Daniel, the prophet, saw a vision and was troubled at his head for many days. Here, bring the woman. We're strangers to one another. You believe God knows you? Amen. You believe He knows me? Amen. Can He reveal to me your trouble? Yes, amen. You're shattered to death with the cancer. Yes, that's, that's right. And besides that, you're a woman preacher. That's the, the truth. And you just give up your church. That's, that's right. But don't give up your church. Don't give up hopes. Look to Jesus who stands here, who knows your condition. And I condemn this cancer on my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may it leave her. Amen. Come believing. Lord, I lay my hands on this little colored girl in the name of Jesus Christ. Heal her. Her loved one, Lord, I pray that you'll heal her. Lord, this little woman, as she passes through the line, may the power of Jesus Christ, it's present now, heal her. God, heal this woman, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you'll grant it. Heal our sister, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, may it be so. God bless you, sister, and may the God of heaven heal you of this arthritis. Come, sister, believing with all your heart now. O oh, eternal God, author of life, give her the blessing she's asking in Jesus Christ's name. Come, sister. Come with the baby. You believe God's going to make it well. In the name of Jesus Christ, may their request be granted to this little one. And I'll take this affliction from it in Jesus Christ's name. Now go believing in both of you. Have faith and serve God. Are you believing? How many can just almost see the presence of the Lord Jesus standing there looking over his audience? The great Jehovah God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's God. This woman here is a stranger to me. Are you, lady? Yes. Do you believe that God can tell me what your trouble is? Yes. If he will, will it help you? Yes. Do you believe? You have arthritis? Yes, sir. You have trouble with your eyes? Yes, sir. You got heart trouble? Yes, sir. You're not from this city? No, sir. You're from another city? Right. Another state? Yes, sir. Arizona? Yes, sir. Kingston, Arizona? Kingston, Arizona. And you're Mrs. Holby? Right. On your road home? You're over your disease. Go home and be made well. In the name of Jesus Christ. I told the audience to know, I've never seen him alive. Is that right? We're totally strangers to one another. But God knows you all. He knows all about you. Just believe he knows who you are and all about you. I challenge every person in here to believe it. Anywhere. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal this woman and make her well. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, God, I pray that you'll heal our sister. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm here for someone who is in bed. God, grant her request in Jesus' name. God, heal this little girl in the name of Jesus Christ. Come, my dear brother. Come believing now. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal my brother. 
Amen. Lord God, as our sister passes by, may she not pass us by man, but may she pass by the cross of Jesus and receive her healing. Amen. Come, my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be healed. Come, my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you go from here healed. Come, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, God's beloved Son, may your healing be. Amen. He gave the promise. He's, he has to keep his promise. Amen. O oh Lord, as I lay hands on these two women coming by with each other, may the Spirit of God make them well. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless this, my sister, and heal her. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless this, my brother, and make him well. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless our sister as I lay hands on her in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless this little mother in the name of Jesus Christ and make her well. Bless Lord my brother and heal his body. Bless this my sister and heal her body and make her well. Grant it, Lord. Bless this my sister and may she be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, bless this my brother and make him well in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless this, my brother, O oh Lord, and give him his request in Jesus' name. Bless my sister, Lord, and give her request in Jesus' name. Likewise, as I lay hands upon my sister, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, bless this, my sister, and make her well, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All right, sister, thank you kindly. How many is believes that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is present. This is His doings, and it's great in our sight. Sister, I see you sitting there at that arthritis in that wheelchair. I can't heal you, but if you'd make an effort, you could walk. If you'll just, you're going to, all right, then get up and go walk, and that's the only way to do it. What about the rest of you? Do you believe that Jesus Christ, God's Son, is here to make you walk also? Do you believe that He's here to heal you? Take you out of that cot, brother, and heal you? Do you believe that with all your heart? Now, it's your, you're the sick person. God's here to make you well if you'll believe it. Do you believe it? Then stand on your feet, each one of you, all over the building. Lay your hands over on one another. There's the woman out of the wheelchair walking that's been bound for years with arthritis walking for her first time. There it is. Raise to your feet, everybody. There's a woman from a wheelchair, bound, been sitting there for years, bound with arthritis, walking in the name of the Lord Jesus. Stand up on your feet and receive your healing. I pronounce you healed by the stripes and the blood of Jesus Christ.